Hi, if you're watching this video, that means one thing has happened. The Wi-Fi has gone down during our presentation. That happens sometimes. No worries, we'll just run this little uh, video demo uh, right off the desktop, and hopefully the Wi-Fi will be working soon so we can get on with our hands-on experiments. A couple of links for you. This is the Google Earth resources pages that I use for my trainings. Uh, Bitly uh, slash SPJ Google Tools is the first one. Uh, that's a page I've set up uh, that has all kinds of uh, resources for Google Earth on there, uh, and as well as some exercises that you can do and some examples of uh, really cool uh, Google Earth time lapses, Google Earth tours, all kinds of really cool stuff there. Um, the other link, which is this one down below, which is for Google's GeoMedia Lab page, um, it has all things Google Earth Maps, Fusion Tables, Google Earth Pro, uh, which we'll demo in another video. Um, all of that resides there, and that's this page. This is the GeoMedia Lab page. It has uh, a lot of good training videos on it, some links to some uh, resources. Uh, it also has a license down here for anyone uh, who's in the broadcast realm that wants to use Google Earth uh, on air. Uh, you can fill out this form once a year. It's free, uh, and it just gives you the broadcast license to use uh, on air. Um, any of the Google Earth photos, zoom ins, uh, anything like that, uh, as well as using Google Earth. So um, it's most definitely something uh, if you're a broadcast outlet uh, for your, with your school, uh, you definitely want to activate that once a year. Again, it's free. Um, the first tool we're going to look at is Google Earth Engine Time Lapse. It's earthengine.google.com slash time lapse or you can just go to earthengine.google.com and click on the little time lapse button here at the very top of the uh, menu. Uh, and Google built this in late 2016 and added some improvements to it like this little search bar so you can search for your own areas up here. And they also have these pre-built little uh, uh, modules down here of different locations you can go to. Um, this is helpful for broadcasts. A lot of times uh, you'll see it running on a monitor behind the uh, broadcasters. It's also very good for uh, print journalism, um, uh, digital journalism, I should say, uh, where you can uh, put these uh, uh, time lapses uh, into a web page just by clicking on share or embed button down here. It gives you the iframe embed code and the shareable link as well. Um, and what this is is an overview of an area uh, showing uh, growth of that area over 32 years of images. You can see the little timeline running at the bottom. These are satellite images uh, that were uh, gathered through NASA, uh, through Carnegie Mellon University's Time Machine Library, um, as well as some uh, USGS imagery. Uh, and you're able to show uh, changes to an area over a period of those 32 years. Um, it'll expand to 2017 a little later this year when we start to get more satellite imagery in. Um, so let's take a look at one of the pre-built ones that Google has given us. We'll take a look at the growth of Las Vegas, Nevada. It's one of the uh, faster growing cities in, in the U.S. and you'll, you're about to see how fast. Um, this is a really helpful tool here. You can see the west side of the city and the north side of the city just exploded grew pretty, uh, pretty well to the south and also to the east right up to the mountain range. Um, but look at to the right, you notice that little reservoir uh, there, not little, um, it's a lake, uh, is going down uh, as the city expands. This is a great way to show change in, in an area. You know, you can uh, use a data set. Uh, I often give my students a data set population or something like that, and then they can go in and look at an area and then visualize it by uh, creating one of these. And again, very easy to build and embed. You can also uh, go in and search uh, for places. Um, you can, uh, it works just like Google Maps would, and put in Chicago, and we'll hop over to Chicago now. Um, and again, these are embeddable, so it's uh, not a tour, it just is one location uh, on each one. And there you can see uh, Chicago. It does allow you to zoom in a little bit, it's hard to get down, you know, right to a neighborhood level, um, but you can zoom in pretty far here and kind of look at. Uh, a larger region. You, see, you notice the satellite imagery improves over the years it's much sharper today than it was in 1984. So that's Google Earth Engine time lapse tool. Uh, really good uh, tool for showing uh, growth and change of an area if you're doing uh, stories on population change or uh, uh, expansion uh, of a certain area or development of a certain area. This is a very valuable tool uh, to use and again very easy to share and embed. Um, we also wanted to show you Google Earth, earth.google.com. Uh, it just relaunched uh, in April of 2017. 
Uh, and it added some new features. Uh, most of you probably used Google Earth before at one point or another. Uh, and it really has added some really fun features here. All your tools are down here in the lower right-hand corner or down this left toolbar. Um, again, you can search it and go to an area that you want to uh, examine, uh, just like we've always been able to do. But it's added in some of the Google search features, like I'm feeling lucky. Uh, and you can zoom in, it'll just randomly take you to an area on the planet. And notice it gives you now the little knowledge cards um, that have been uh, part of the knowledge graph that you'll see on Google search on the right hand side. So if you type in a place, it'll give you typically the location, a photo of it, and some information about the address, or if it's a business, the time it's open, or uh, you know, costs, uh, other images, things like that. So they've added this into Google Earth. This didn't uh, exist here before. And again, you can use all these image, images right free as, rights free as long as you attribute them to Google or have this Google watermark uh, on and down at the bottom. Uh, if you need to zoom back out, you just click this little globe in the right hand side. Um, you can zoom in, zoom out using the plus and minus sign down there. And you still have a little guy here for street view. Uh, so if I want to go to a certain area and look at a street view, uh, it'll allow me to do that. So I'm going to jump in here and go to Wrigley Field. And then I can go down and zoom in on it and look at it in 3D, uh, which I have it set to. Um, and I can toggle back and forth between the two, two-dimensional or three-dimensional where it tilts. Um, you can also zoom in closer. Uh, you can also put your guy in street view and drop him down on the street, the little guy down here in the lower right corner. I dropped him down into the middle of the street and it'll take you down to a street view image um, that Google records. Again, it doesn't give you uh, spaces for uh, or uh, images of every location, but uh, it gives you a lot of street view. And this is uh, Wrigley Field from just a few months ago. They were building this building. It's now completed and there's a big hotel here now. So uh, that's Google uh, 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 Street View uh, that's built into Google Earth. Another feature they've added here uh, is Voyager. Uh, and this is a newer product for them. Voyager are pre-built uh, stories uh, that Google Earth has built, sometimes in conjunction uh, with uh, other media outlets and organizations. Uh, they've done some work with the BBC. Uh, you can see that first one up there was Sesame Street. Uh, and they can take you and show you different parts of the world uh, and incorporate some of the things that you'll find in Google My Maps. Uh, in other places, and it's really kind of a cool thing. Uh, one of my favorites is this reading the ABCs from space. They did this one with NASA. Uh, and as you click on this, you can go in, it gives you a little cover page. Uh, but, but much like Google Maps, it'll give you uh, a photo of the location uh, and then a little data about each one. And this, in this case, they found different parts of the world that have uh, shapes like uh, the letters uh, of the alphabet. And it's a great way to kind of tell a story. You know, here's an island that's shaped like D. Um, here's something shaped like the letter E. Uh, and it jumps around. And it's just kind of, kind of some cool storytelling. Uh, it's a little different story. Uh, they haven't given us tools yet where we can build these ourselves. We can do tours in Google Earth Pro, which I'll show you on another video. Um, but this one just does a really nice job uh, of showing it different ways you can tell a story. Um, so it's a good reference tool. Um, for you. Uh, you can also share and embed these. You can share the, uh, uh, share the link or uh, use the link on your web page. Uh, you just get the link here or share over your social channels to the right. Uh, and that tool is in the lower left hand corner. Um, so that's it for Google Earth. I did want to mention Google My Maps or maps.google.com uh, still has the Google Earth uh, imagery in it. Uh, if you just click on satellite down here in the lower left hand corner um, it'll zoom in on a certain area uh, in your uh, uh, Google Earth mode. Um, you can also have, use Street View uh, as well uh, in this version. So they still exist here, uh, but you can also use Google Earth um, to manage your projects as well. Um, Juxtapose JS, this is a tool from the Night Lab, juxtapose.nightlab.com. Um, let's say you have a photo of a building that burned down during riots in your town and you use Google Earth to go back and find a street view image of what that building looked like before it burned down. Um, you can put those uh, uh, online or grab the URLs for them, drop them in here, label them, and then hit publish. Uh, and it will give you a shareable link and embed code. And you can share this little slider so you could show your before image here 
and then unveil the burn building afterwards. In this case, it's uh, development of a specific area. So it's juxtapose.nightlab.com. Great little tool uh, for sharing that type of information. So that's it for this video. We've got some others to come.